Hey all, so I've been playing around with this NIMBIN here. This is the standardized modular system for all sorts of nuclear and particle electronics. Um, and I've been playing around with doing DIY gamma spectroscopy without a multi-channel analyzer on the computer. Now these setups was, and still is to some extent, very common in the physics fields. Um, particle accelerator instrumentation and reactor instrumentation and uh, all kinds of nuclear and high energy physics experiments. They're quite nice, and uh, I've picked up a lot of modules from eBay over the last uh, couple of weeks and months. And uh, I've seen this experiment described in a nuclear physics book, but I've never seen it actually done. So basically what I've been doing is I've been using this module, which is called a single channel analyzer, for gamma spectroscopy. Now, let me walk you through the setup. So first let's turn it on. Now, first of all, we have a high voltage bias supply here which we will turn on, set it to a thousand volts. And this then feeds via a bias T here into my scintillation counter probe here. I have a source of potassium carbonate here. Potassium is slightly radioactive, as you know. The detector then goes to a preamp, which is home built, which then goes to this module here. Now this is called a spectroscopy amplifier or a shaping amplifier. And the basic idea is that the pulse that comes out of the preamp, let me show you. This is directly from the preamp. And as you can see, this is a very sharp fall time pulse with a kind of slow and relaxed return to zero. The idea is to take these pulses and give them a fixed width. In this case, I've set the shaping time to three microseconds and uh, I've given it some gain. You can choose the gain, both fine and coarsely. And uh, then it also inverts it and does some uh, baseline restoration stuff. But let me show you the output pulses of this. Now the output pulses look like this. And they do have a negative component and they really shouldn't. That is probably some impedance mismatch in my chaos. But look how Gaussian and uniform the positive part of the peak looks. Only varies in height, the width is the same. That's exactly what we want, because, of course, the shorter the peak is, the more counts we can have without them overlapping. Um, and the pulse height is critical in this case. That's actually, when you do gamma spectroscopy, what you're measuring is actually the pulse heights. And the pulse height is directly proportional to the, the energy of the incident particle. Now, the single channel analyzer here is the simplest form of pulse height analysis you can do. And it basically just lets you set a lower bound and a window size, and if the peak comes in between those two limits set, it gives a logic pulse out, just a standard 5 volt logic pulse, which can then be counted by a counter here. Now, the way a, uh, a real, in quote marks, gamma spectrometer would work is that it would have an ADC that would just capture this pulse and it will just sort them by height in a histogram directly. And what we can do here, which is the simpler form, but still accomplishes the same thing, is we can set this at zero, set some small window here, in my case 0.4 volts, and then we can simply count for a while, stop the counter, move the window up by the window size, count again, and do that until we've covered the entire spectrum. Now that is very low resolution, but it does actually work. And now this is how this experiment actually works. We set Set the window at, we start at zero volts with some window, in this case 400 millivolts. We start the counter, we let it count, it's the upper counter that's the, uh, the output of the single channel analyzer. Let it count for a minute, stop it, note that count, move up the window, do it again, stop it again, so on so forth. Either way, writing down the counts here, this is just the total counts, that's what is displayed on the lower counter. Um, this is just total counts out from the detector to make sure that it doesn't drift and uh, doesn't stop working at some point. We get these counts out and we can then plot them. And wouldn't you know, it looks almost exactly like you'd expect a gamma spectrum of potassium 40 to look. This is just the 25 points. I haven't labeled this axis. Of course, we have a lot of counts down here because we also have a lot of noise and uh, uh, X-ray fluorescence and whatever from cosmic rays and nothing is shielded here really. So we have a lot of that and we have something that looks a lot like a Compton continuum and a Compton Edge, and something that looks like a potassium-40 photo peak. Now, 
We can use the single channel analyzer now that we know what this point is and this point is to verify whether or not this is potassium 40. Because we can just set a limit here and set a limit here and measure over 7, 10 minutes, in my case 7 minutes, and then remove our potassium 40 source and measure the difference. And I've done exactly that. These are the counts. Without the potassium, I get 189 counts. With potassium carbonate, I get 354 counts. I think that's indicative that this is actually the potassium 40 photo peak we're seeing. Now, the reason the count doesn't drop any lower than that, 189 is still quite a lot of counts, I think is because it's a natural background potassium in the wood table. Of course, potassium carbonate used to be extracted from wood ash, so it stands to reason that there should be a lot of potassium in wood. But yeah, that's, uh, that's how you do gamma spectroscopy with a single channel analyzer. Now, there are a lot of problems with this. There's a limit to how finely you can set these controls, even though they are 10 turn potentiometers. Also, there's the risk of slightly overlapping bins. So the count areas might overlap, so things might be counted twice or not at all. And that's, of course, the downside of this. But the main downside of this is still that it is tedious and slow and takes forever. And yeah, you wouldn't want to do this 4,000 times to get a higher resolution gamma spectrum. But there's actually hope for and bettering this because I do have an RS-232 interface for this counter, which means I can print those counts on the computer. And, and this single channel analyzer does have an input that just takes a DC voltage instead of this value. So you could actually set a very tiny step here and just have the Arduino move that up after an ended count cycle on this. This also gives a logic pulse out when it's done counting. Uh, so you could actually make a decent uh, gamma spectrometer out of this, but I don't think I'll bother. Uh, this was mainly a demonstration. So I hope you found that interesting, and I hope to do a lot more experiments with this setup. Uh, there's really quite a lot you can do. You can also do all kinds of weird coincidence, cosmic ray spectroscopy stuff, and uh, uh, yeah, either way. See you. Bye.